Do more by doing less. With me, Charles Alexander, for small business owners, startups, and busy folks. Looks like you've been missing a lot of work lately. I wouldn't say I've been missing it, Bob. What do you mean funny? Funny how? How am I funny? Clark, that's the gift that keeps on giving the whole year. <laughs> Look, that's the best impersonation I can give you of what my morning alarm used to sound like. Uh, and it would go off every morning, uh, early but not too early. And it would wake Sarah up before it woke me up every time because I am a deep sleeper. And she would always say the same thing. Can you turn that stupid thing down? And some mornings she was a little more frustrated than others, but uh, she would use colorful language. And I don't want to have a big E strapped to my podcast here. So I'll just say she said that stupid thing. And I couldn't turn it down because I didn't know how. Steve Jobs hates me and I couldn't quite figure out how to adjust the volume. Uh, and I usually would hit snooze. Not sure why that isn't even an option. And then I'd finally get going. Uh, and unfortunately, the alarm clock is on my phone. And my phone also had all of these other cool bells and whistles. Usually a big red box with white numbers in it telling me in my lizard brain that I'm missing out on something really important. I have to check it right away. Text messages, social, social media uh, DMs, the news of the day. Oh, that's a terrible way to wake up, by the way, trying to figure out what's going on in Bangladesh. And then lastly, maybe I would check email and it would never fail because uh, you'd fast forward 15 minutes later and I'm frustrated. I'm mad over an email that some a client just sent me or upset of a over a text from a family member or worried about gas prices. Again, I don't know why I was worried about gas prices. I don't even drive that much. I would do all this back then without the use of really Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, all of the fun things that we have now. This was roughly 2015. My goal back in the day was just to get up before all the little munchkins did, get into the kitchen before they did, do the bare minimum to get myself ready, make lunches, make breakfast, knock on the door, one at a time for each kid and watch them start slumbering into the kitchen themselves and trying to get them ready and there'd be hugs and there'd be kisses and there'd also be some tears because you know why there's three kids and somebody's upset all the time uh, and then off we'd go to work and then once I'd get to an office setting I would jump into email right away check my voicemail and start putting out fires because well that's what I'd been doing all morning by the time 9 a.m roll around I was exhausted wonder why I could never get any of the important things done for the day luckily I had a change of course about that time I started my own side uh, business in addition to business coaching and uh, really had to start practicing some of what I was preaching. Got into a group coach uh, model, which by the way, I love group coaching where it's not just one coach trying to hold you accountable, but you see a whole other group of people who are doing the same thing that you are. And some of them have fewer, they got more excuses than you have. They, they've got more kids or they've got actual medical issues or they've got certain circumstances and they're still overcoming them. That makes you feel like you've got to pull your weight. But either way, started having to get more intentional about my day each and every day and I had to change my morning routine at that point. Uh, so what I did uh, was to actually start getting up before every other member in my house did. And back then I was getting up, I think around 530. Note here, Please still get the amount of sleep you need. I am a big advocate for at least getting seven to eight real hours of sleep, uh, getting some of that good REM sleep, the stuff that uh, helps retrain your brain and gives you some relaxation. But if you can still squeeze in a few extra minutes before the rest of the household gets up, do it. Uh, and it was important for me back then. And I'd get up and I'd pray or meditate. All the stuff that I always considered to be woo-woo stuff that I would make fun of that I was starting to do a little bit myself. Uh, and then I'd also journal a little bit or I'd read and there'd be some days I would want to write down all of my intentions for the day. Or some days it would be just a brain dump to get everything out of my head and onto paper. That way it could live and breathe somewhere else instead of between my ears. And this wasn't an immediate shift. This was gradual and took time. There were mornings where I'd still hit the snooze button. There were mornings that I would just stare uh, at the book and never read a word. There were mornings that I'd get paralyzed and get frustrated and have nothing to show for it, but I just kept showing up and doing just that. 
And that's my morning progression. It may not be totally relatable to you, but that, that's what I had to start doing. Um, and the reason I would do that in the morning, I get a lot of people say, yeah, but I'm more of a night owl. Look, I, I guess in theory, but I'm biorhythms are a thing. And I think we're supposed to be kind of following the sun to the best of our ability because morning me morning, Charles, he's awesome. He generally meditates. He gets his day going. He's a writer. He has a to-do list all oh, morning. Charles, he's a rock star. He works out. He, he does the right things. Unfortunately, about two or 3 PM afternoon, Chuck shows up afternoon. Chuck, he, he, he's not all about it. He he's more fun, I guess. Uh, but afternoon Chuck, he didn't have many goals. Uh, his, his big key sometimes is just to maybe have a beer on the back porch with a neighbor and do a little grilling out and try to find out what all is on Netflix and afternoon Chuck, he's playing fantasy football and he, he just dies off about nine or 10 o'clock. And then morning Chuck shows up morning. Charles shows up again about five 45. And that's why the morning routine is so important. Uh, and this is not just me. I've tracked a ton. I've worked with over 2000 entrepreneurs, the successful ones, almost all have a morning routine. The not so successful ones, a lot of them can't come close to a routine. So the ones that have a morning routine, here's what I've figured out. I'm going to list several things out for you. Pick just a couple. Don't try to do them all at once. First and foremost, journaling. That's top notch for me. I just told you, you know, back in 2015, I didn't really start journaling just yet. I was doing a lot, ton of reading. Uh, and I'm a big advocate for reading. Reading is, we'll get to that in a second, but journaling, write down your intentions of the day, write down uh, what you did yesterday, write down some wins that you had, even if they're small. So you can start win stacking, write down your goals for the year, but write them every day. And I would do that over and over. I can promise you when I started doing that, that little side hustle became a full-time business. I don't know what the magic was or how it's related, but my income, I don't, I want to say it was close to doubling. That's number one. Number two, meditate, pray, visualize, whatever you want to call it. Uh, talk to a higher being, but get real quiet and let your brain rest. Let your brain think of the things it wants to accomplish and go so deep into it that it can use all five senses. A buddy of mine lives up in Minnesota, decided that he wanted to put a pool in, which is bananas, but he knew that through the power of visualiz power of visualization, he could make it happen. He would tell me stories about Charles. I, I would sit there. I would visualize the pool. I would hear the music on the radio that we were playing specific songs. I could see my beautiful wife wearing her brand new bikini here, see my kids jumping into the pool and I could feel the water splashing on me as I'm sunning on the side. And sure enough, he visualized it enough to where he created the income where he could get a pool and use it. I don't know how long they use it, two, three, two, three months out of the year, but it was the point that he could accomplish that. Number three, read. Smart people, they read. They don't doom scroll. They don't get all their news from their social media feed. In fact, turn the news off. Read books by smart authors. It's like having that person inside your head. Uh, next, plan. Do some small planning for the day. It doesn't have to be an entire five-year strategic plan every time you wake up, but you need to have a plan for your day. If you don't, your day will just show up and it will kick you all over the yard. Create, write down the two or three things that are most important that you want to do that day. Maybe some of you want to work out first thing in the morning. Uh, that's important for a lot of the entrepreneurs I've met to get up, to get moving, to get their, I don't know, endorphins, uh, oxy. Tosin, I don't even know. I'm, I'm really butchering those. They get all those things, dopamine. <laughs> uh, and, and I love a good workout too. For me, I work out uh, mid morning. That's my magic time to get it done. But I can promise you, it has a great effect on the rest of your day. And then for some of you, and this is rare, I, I need, normally don't recommend this, but if you have a big project coming up, you have uh, a sales pitch that you need to make, there's a podcast you want to record, there's a book you want to write. For a period of time, it is okay, not all the time, to work first thing in the morning. Hit that, don't hit the snooze button, go attack the one thing that it is you're trying to get done and then get it done. That way you can go back to your regular morning routine. Now, as for me, my, uh, my alarm is no longer on, uh, the phone. My alarm is now back to the Fitbit and me and Sarah have a much more pleasant morning. 
Don't take off just yet. I've created a new program just for you. Helping overworked entrepreneurs create their very own four-day work week in 90 days or less. Look, if you'd rather spend more time with family, friends, traveling, exercising, having the time to do what you want instead of, I don't know, putting out never-ending fires, tackling another to-do list, and checking email at 9 p.m., then go to my website, yourcharlesalexander.com. If you've created the income you want, but don't have the time freedom you deserve, then this is for you. And as always, if you don't, an angel may actually lose its wings. True story. Have a great day.